Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for our Navigating the Process of Obtaining a Home Loan webinar. Um, we are um, delighted to be sharing this information with you today and help you on your path to home ownership. I'm Corby Gage. I'm the Executive Director of Colsa Housing Partnership. And with us today, uh, is, we've got uh, Kim Paskage from our office, Postal Housing Partnership. And today's webinar features three local loan officers who are going to bring a great deal of um, uh, wealth of information to uh, you and um, your home buying process. Sandra Farias from PB and Associates in Santa Maria. Lori Murray from American Riviera Bank in Santa Barbara, and Gabriela Santana uh, from Guild Mortgage in Ventura. So we've got a great group, and um, Lori, uh, Sandra, and Gabriela are all part of Coastal Housing Partnerships Network. And so as part of this network, these lenders reduce their closing costs for you um, as employees of Coastal Housing Partnership. And um, offer you a, a really nice savings on um, your closing costs. So we want to, you know, make sure you're aware of that home buying benefit program that we offer. We work with lenders, real estate agents, home inspection firms, all offer savings um, on the closing costs. And so this group is part of that network. So the format for today's webinar is I'm going to be asking um, Gabriella, Sandra, and Lori questions about the process of obtaining a home loan, and really being ready to purchase a home. The remainder of our time together will be to get your questions answered. I think that's really important. We want to address the issues that are important to you. Uh, we are, are recording today's webinar. So um, if you have to drop off or um, you are interested in hearing this information again, um, we will send you that recording automatically. So you don't even need to reach out for it. We'll just send that to you. So the webinar format means that your cameras are turned off. We can't hear you. Um, so if you want to communicate with us, if it's a technical issue, please throw it in the chat and Kim will be monitoring that um, and can help you there. If it's a question that you have, and again, we really encourage you to ask questions. Um, and throw that into the Q&A. You can ask that question anonymously or you can ask it um, you know, with your name attached to it, whatever you want, whatever you're comfortable with. But put that in the Q&A. You can um, put that in the Q&A at any time. We're not gonna get to the questions until we go through kind of the, the pre-assigned questions that we have, but um, put that in there at any time. And then when we get to the questions, Kim will be um, monitoring that and we'll get those questions answered for you. Um, so since the first step in the home buying process is meeting with a lender to find out how much of a loan you can afford, uh, information you're going to receive today will make you much better prepared um, to take that important first step of um, home ownership. Kim has put up a, a short poll here today just so we know um, the bulk of our audience and th these questions you can answer again anonymously um, just helps us to know uh, how to gear this information. So just a few more seconds, we'll have that poll up. Okay, I see a lot of answers still coming in. So we'll wait just a little bit longer. Okay, Kim, you think you want to end the poll or are you still seeing things coming in? I'm going to give it just a short more time. Okay, let's end the poll. Thank you so much. That's That's really helpful. Okay, I'm still seeing the poll, Kim. Do I just need to X out? Okay, all right, great. So let's get started. 
Um, Sandra, would you um, just um, introduce yourself, share just a, a, a bit about yourself for the um, our group today? Sure. Um, I currently work for PD and Associates. I am a loan officer here. Um, I've actually been licensed since 2013. Um, I work in a real estate office also, so um, we do real estate and home loans. Um, and I have two boys, <laughs> one's 11 and the other one's um, 13. Busy life. Yes, busy life. <laughs> <laughs> Lori, would you um, please introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, thank you, Corby. My name is Lori Murray. I am a senior vice president and in charge of the residential lending group for American Riviera Bank. Um, I have been in this business for as way more gray hairs than are showing today. Um, I love what I do. I um, have been helping all sorts of people for many, many, many years with um, financing. And in my current role, it, it is it's still doing loan officer stuff because I just can't back away from it as well as managing managing our, our team. Um, in addition to Coastal Housing Partnership, I am on the, actually on the Coastal Housing Partnership Board, which um, has been a great experience just to uh, help home buyers on the Central Coast as best we can. Great. And thanks for your participation on the board with us, Lori. Uh, Gabriella, would you please introduce yourself? Yes, thank you for having me, uh, Corby, and, and the, the group and team at Coastal Housing Partnership. My name is Gabriela Santana. I am with Guild Mortgage. I've been in the um, mortgage finance industry since 2001. That's a long time. <laughs> so um, I've seen the ups and downs and in between. Um, it's been fun, a nice little roller coaster. So this is a, a, an environment that is uh, comes with change, which is great. And change usually brings good opportunities for first-time buyers. So this is a really good opportunity for you, uh, you, the people who are on the webinar, to really get educated on what's available. So I applaud you for that. Um, I am a mom, a single mom of two teenagers, which that's fun too. <laughs> um, and I just love what I do. I love, love, love helping people achieve their goals in if it takes one year to three years, five years, whatever it may be, I I love helping them along the way and seeing that goal getting established when they get their keys. It's just a wonderful feeling. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Well, you can just see from um, these three loan officers, I think it kind of breaks through a myth about what it means to get a home loan. Um, these are just, you know, you know, great real people um, who are eager to help you, to counsel you through the process, to give you the information. You know, rarely is it a high pressure thing. And um, it's just something that is a really good first place to get started is with uh, the loan officer. You can see this is just, they're there to help you and support you. And you can see the motivation that they have too. So I think that's an important thing to carry into this thing is to not be daunted by the, um, the lending process. So Gabriella, we're gonna start with you. Um, you know, the big, a big question is, you know, when's the right time for a potential home buyer to go meet with a lender? Um, do they need to be ready to buy? Or is it a good idea to meet with them just to even develop a game plan? Yeah, that's a good question. And I have to say that it's a good time to meet with a lender when, You've been really thinking about what it would take for you personally to buy your own home when that curiosity becomes more than I wonder, you know, what, what does it take? Um, and also when you find yourself like looking through Zillow, starting to look at properties, it's, that curiosity is like, what about this neighborhood? What about that neighborhood? That is a perfect time to really um, sit down and meet with a lender because even though you don't feel that you're ready at that moment, um, you really need to kind of discover where you're at. And that's the, our role, just like Corby said, um, sitting down with the lender will help you see, am I ready now? Um, if I'm not, what is it going to take to get there? Should I maybe a planned out detailed action steps help me get there? And then it also will help you determine when when you're going to be ready, if it can be as soon as next month, or if it's going to be down the line, if this is going to be more of a long-term goal, but it does definitely help you lay out a plan. And it answers a lot of questions you may have 
So I would say when you are at that point that you want it, that's when you meet with the lender. Okay. So interesting. So Gabriela, does that mean that um, if someone is thinking, you know, maybe they're, they're a couple of years out, um, have you found that someone maybe comes to meet with you, they're thinking it's a couple of years out and you are finding that maybe they're ready to buy in nine months and they just didn't really understand the process and you can kind of walk them through that or is that, are you finding that? Definitely. Yes. Yes. Um, because sometimes I think we're, we can be pessimistic about our situation or it seems a little overwhelming when it comes to finding, um, you know, getting a loan. I mean, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's not like buying a car, but, um, but it is, that's why it's important to know where you're at. Uh, because in addition to that, as you'll hear today, there's programs out there, you know, there's options. And that's probably the biggest thing I always tell my clients, ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask, what about this? You know, is this, is there something available in my area? Is there, um, I heard this, I heard this rumor. I read about that. It's a perfect, perfect opportunity. We're here to not just get you alone. We're here to educate you. And like Corby said at the beginning, to really give you that guidance and make you feel that you're making a confident, educated decision when you're stepping into your home. Great. So when um, someone meets with the lender for the first time, they're asking for a pre-approval. Like what, you know, what's involved in that pre-approval process? Why, why is that important for a potential home buyer? Uh, so the pre-approval is important. So when you meet with the lender, uh, you want to get your, your questions ready with, like I mentioned, but as part of that discovery session with your lender, the what we're going to be doing, we're also going to be working on the process of the pre-approval. So what the basically the pre-approval is, it is very important because it provides us as a lender a solid direction and guide for your qualification and your future home loan. So uh, I always say that the first phase of pre-approval is is the first uh, pre-approval, I'm sorry, is the first phase of your full loan approval. And generally that includes an automated approval. So, um, and then in most cases, even an underwritten approval. So what all that means is once we sit down, we calculate your income, we look, we analyze your credit scores, we analyze your credit history, and maybe even confirm your savings, we're able to submit your details into an automated system and this automated system confirms your qualification for the program that we're aiming for. So that that um, automated approval becomes a checklist for us, which is nice. It's a nice guide for us to determine, okay, yeah, they, they can fulfill A, B, and C. And then to make it um, even more solid or solidify the automated approval, we're able to submit for what's called an underwritten review. This is a decision maker, a person who actually is an expert in that particular program they look at the scenario and they say, yep, they fulfill all the requirements. They fulfill all these guidelines um, for the, the pre-approval for the future home loan. Now that pre-approval, when you have your real estate agent or you have it in your hot little hand becomes very essential because when you're shopping, uh, your real estate agent will use that as a tool to help you really catch the property you want. The real estate agent will use your pre-approval with any offer that you place on a property. And what it's doing, it's showing the seller's agent and the seller that you are truly qualified to buy that home. So it gives everybody that peace of mind. Great. That's um, just a, a lot more confidence in knowing, you know, how they can get focused and targeted in their home buying search, it sounds like. Yes. Great. Lori, we're going to go to you um, with a big topic of credit scores. So um, <laughs> obviously we hear, you know, so much about credit scores. There, it seems like they're in every ad that you're seeing nowadays and uh, ways to improve your score and different things. I, I know um, credit sc scores are pretty important in terms of obtaining yeah. a home loan. Can you share some information with us sure. about you know, why they're important, how they're determined? Um, yeah. Yeah. Happy to. So what, we're, what credit scores are and why lenders care so much is that it really is a good indication of how a borrower is going to manage, has managed their debt in the past and how they're going to manage it going forward. And 
so what the score does, it kind of gives us an indication of, um, of, of those items. And, you know, how scores are determined, it, it, it's, a comp, it's a fairly complicated model, but the main things to consider and the main things that will drive credit scores are payment history is the most important one. So how you have made your payments on the debts that you have. So credit cards, um, student loans, car payments, those are all taken into account as far as what type of um, credit history that you might have. Um, and again, the most important thing is how you pay your bills and that you pay your bills on time. Another thing that's important is the length of credit. So how long you've had credit. So whether it's been that you've had a credit card that you've had since, you know, since you were 21 or that's going to, obviously that's going to be really important as far as keeping, if you're looking at closing accounts, for instance, you just want to make sure that the card that you've had for the longest, you want to keep that one open because again, that, that is something that is going to be reflective of how long you've have had credit. Um, also, really, really important is how much you owe. Um, generally, the rule of thumb is, especially on revolving credit like credit cards, so say you may have a $10,000 credit limit on a credit card, you really want to keep your outstanding balance um, around 30% is considered kind of ideal. So $3,000 is probably the most you might want to have on that credit card. So think about um, when you are... Um, using a credit card, yeah, and you might get miles for it, or you may get some special reward, but it, it is, it might be something that you do kind of want to break up and make sure you're not putting all your credit on, on one card so that you're kind of maxing out your balance. Because uh, that is really important as far as the ratio of how much you owe to what is, um, what your limit is on that card. And finally, the last is, as we kind of just, I mentioned briefly, is different types of credit. So it might be a credit card or an installment loan, like a car loan or a student loan. Uh, um, those different makeup of different types of credit is also important in determining your score. Okay, okay. so so interesting. So um, in terms of um, someone's score, if they're trying to improve their score, should they, you know, we hear all the time, Oh, I'm trying to get my credit score, you know, in great shape um, before I go see a lender. Um, is that a good idea? Or is it better to work with a lender on specific items to improve? I think you should always be mindful of your credit. You should always, um, regard it, regardless if you're going to talk to a lender or not, you should be mindful of what is happening on your credit. And you should check your credit fairly regularly. Um, there are a number of different sites you can go to. A lot of banks offer it as far as as part of your credit score or as part of your, your account that they might let you know what your credit score is, or you can go to Credit Karma or annualcreditreport.com and they will give you um, a full credit report once a year. I do always recommend um, people look at their credit, you know, even before they're thinking about looking at a home just so that they know what's what's on there. Um, you know, I all the time people come in and say, oh no, my credit's excellent. And then you know, we pull credit and wait, what about this bill? Oh, I forgot about that. So um, <laughs> it is something that we can work with. And most important, uh, we do, uh, you know, we do provide various ways that we may think of things that might improve your credit or what you can do to help your credit uh, so that you are ready when you, you know, so that your credit is ready at the time that you are ready to buy a house so that you can get the best rate. Again, rates, um, the higher or the better your credit is, it, it definitely will improve um, the rate um, that you end up getting for your loan. So it sounds like that's another good reason to go see a lender sooner rather than later is really determining what your credit is and if it's appropriate and, and maybe working with that lender to um, get that score improved or maybe correct some mistakes that are on mm -hmm. there. That'd be something yeah. that a lender could help you with. For sure. Yes. Okay. Now the pre-approval, um, you're going to run your credit with the pre-approval. Is that going to be a negative? Is, is that going to be something that someone should steer clear of because of, of running the credit and, and maybe a negative impact on their score? What do you think the balancing act is there? That's, that's what it is a balance. So again, as far as what it also is included in your score are how many 
inquiries you have in your credit. So if you're in, if you are out shopping for a car loan, a home loan, um, and credit cards, it, it is definitely going to impact your score. Basically, about every inquiry you make, you know, they supposedly is you know a ten percent or a ten point ding on your score. But as far as for mortgages, if you know, if if you're applying for a loan, if you're doing it within a 30 day period, um, and if you've applied with or had your credit checked a few different times, it's all going to just count as one inquiry as long as it's kind of right around that during that same 30 day period. I obviously for a pre approval, we have to run credit. We can't get we can't make a credit decision without running credit. So we will have to run credit in that case, and we you know just. Obviously, you know, you you want to just be cautious as far as how many times your credit's run. You probably don't want to be applying for credit cards or car loans right around that same time that you are um, looking at applying for a home loan. Okay. So it sounds like as we're coming into the holiday season, maybe don't take all those retail <laughs> offers from cards that say 20% off your purchase today if you open a new card. Um, but getting that pre-approval, that sounds like that's a valuable um, it is a va valuable inquiry for your credit, for sure. Okay, great. So much great information. Thank you. Sandra, so one of the things we get asked all the time is, what about first-time homebuyer programs? Are there any available? People, of course, want to take advantage of this. And, you know, who's considered a first-time homebuyer? Um, you know, um, you know what's, what's involved with the first-time homebuyer program? Um, so the first time home buyer program um, that is available is a Cal FHA. It's through California, um, and it's a down payment assistance program. They do offer, you know, the the first loan and your actual your down payment assistance. So it could be three percent or it could be three and a half percent. It is a loan, but they do have that available. The first time home buyers is considered anyone that's not been on title or any kind of home or real estate for the last three years. Mm -hmm. So those programs are available. It is an income restricted program. The income um, limit for Santa Barbara County is 198,000 a year. And for San Luis County, it's 216,000 a year. So um, those programs are available. Um, there is multiple programs of it other than this program available, um, but you would have to just check either with your employer or the lender that you're working with and just reach out to see if they offer any kind of city um, down payment assistance programs and what other options they are there is available for assistance because there is very, there is a many, many programs out there. Um, I just wanted to check touch briefly on the Cal FHA on that kind of program. So it sounds like another good reason to get with the lender sooner rather yes. than later. Instead of needing that 20% down, maybe you're only needing three and or five percent. And there's also, um, there's certain lenders that offer certain programs and there's others that don't. So I would recommend just speaking to your loan officer or whoever you're gonna be going through to see if there was any other programs available. Because I know that there's certain programs for um, people that work for the city or the county and um, doctors and just there's so many different programs out there. Okay, great. Um, so in terms of income restrictions, that sounds like a fairly high income limit. You're saying like 190,000, 200,000 range, and you can still get into these programs. So we're right. not talking, you know, something around 50,000 a year. Well, this, this is a pretty good it's salary that significant. Yeah. There's a lot of people that do fall into um, this income limit. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, now, in terms of that first time home buyer, so say someone bought a home um, with a partner, um, maybe th they're divorced um, and they haven't owned a home for a period of, I think you were saying three years. So even though they owned a home before, they're still considered a first time home buyer if it's been three years. Correct. Yes. Okay. Okay. So um, that first time home buyer is fairly large definition. Then. It is a very large definition. Yes. Yeah. Because um, there could be situations where like, let's just say they got divorced and they haven't been on title for three years, you know, things like that, or they move from state to state. So there's different definitions to first time home buyer. Okay. So someone coming in from another state is considered a first time home buyer in 
if they have not been on title for three years. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that's, that's great to know. So it sounds like basically just check with your lender, um, let them know, you know, kind of maybe, um, you know, are you a teacher? Or are you a medical worker? There may be some programs that are available and just have them, you know, look into it and see if they, they can find something that, that helps you with your down payment. Yes. Okay, great. So helpful. Um, Gabriella, so, you know, we just talked about <laughs> maybe not needing a 20% down payment because you can get one of these uh, loan <laughs> programs. So um, what, you know, tell me about that down payment. You know, we always hear that 20% down. Um, sounds like there are other options that you don't need to save up for 20%. And maybe that's another good reason to go see a lender to find out what's available there. Yes, for sure. Um, so yeah, and that old school uh, um, mentality or, or regulation of the 20% down. I mean, that's ideal, of course, if you can do that, that's great. <laughs> but, um, you know, nowadays, especially with our prices, that's just Unfortunately, and un, it's not feasible for the average person or even the majority of of uh, people in our areas, especially in California. So, uh, so yes, there is programs as Sandra was mentioning, like first time buyer programs specifically that offer assistance. But um, the basic traditional, say, first time buyer program is um, a benefit because the minimum requirement for a first time buyer is three percent of the purchase price. And now that type of program is called conventional. It's a conventional um, uh, mortgage loan. Um, and conventional programs, they really kind of focus and heavily weigh your qualification on credit score and also your that debt to income, you know, what, what um, Lori was talking about. Everything that Lori said kind of fits into that, that area of conventional loans. So when you're meeting with your lender, these are one of the things that they're, we kind of do as a process of elimination. When we're reviewing that credit report that ta Lori talked about, when we're going to review where you uh, employment is, uh, what type of employment you have, we'll look at the programs that have that flexibility. Um, for example, if you know that your credit score isn't so great or you do have some blemishes in the past, then there's programs, uh, for example, like FHA. So FHA is actually open to anyone. Um, it was actually created for first-time buyers back in the day. Uh, it is a government program because it offers a 3.5% down payment. And the FHA, um, same thing, it follows. We, we all have to look at guidelines. We have to look at uh, perimeters, but this one's a little bit more flexible because it does give us flexibility on that score. It does give us flexibility on the history. Uh, the goal and aim of this program was created to really help people get into a home. Um, so the point was to try to, to try to get there, you know, so it also creates that flexibility with that debt to income ratio that we mentioned earlier. And then we have programs like the VA loan, which is for veterans or active service members or qualified reservists. And this program actually allows them to put 0% down. So a total 100% financing of the actual purchase price, um, which means that they only come in with their closing costs. And sometimes they can even wiggle out of that. <laughs> so there is, there is programs out there that, uh, depending again on your situation, depending on where you're at, that we start looking for. So it's not just a, a cookie cutter. Um, we actually are trying to find a custom product for you and a, something that will suit your needs. Um, so again, like everybody's been mentioning, really talking and being, I have to say that sometimes it is hard to divulge your information to someone you don't know, you haven't met, but it is a really good idea to be honest of what you're trying to accomplish and what you're trying to achieve, because that will help us as your team, you know, team member to get you there, um, to be able to actually get you into something that is going to benefit you in the long run. Um, even though rates are, are a little higher than they were before, there's still options out there. And we want to make sure that we find that particular situation for you that you really will suit your future needs as well. So, so important again to see a lender because then you've got that game plan of 
oh, now I, I've got this great program that fits my credit score. Um, I only need 5% down. Now you have a new, new goal on what your savings is. Um, you're not waiting to save that 20% down payment. The market gets away from you. So sounds like, again, you know, all that great information you're going to find out from a lender by, by taking that first meeting. Now, what kind of things can you use as a down payment? Um, retirement funds or are gifts okay? Um, what what um, other sources are there than our traditional, just, you know, pulling it out of our savings account? Yeah. So obviously we do have the checking and savings. Um, like you mentioned, we do have retirement accounts. That would be your 401k. Um, there is some actually for you, especially those of you who work for either the county or the city, um, there is some retirement accounts that we cannot touch. So just FYI, we do review that with you. Um, and there, but those that are available, like a 401k, um, you can access that. There's also, like you mentioned, a gift. If you have a nice aunt, uncle, or close family member that is willing to help you out, um, we can even do um, like conventional loans and also FHA, they'll allow uh, like wedding gifts. So uh, things like that, if you get a nice little gift from somebody, you can definitely use it. Um, and then some people have not really heard about this, but you can use your credit card cash rewards. Uh, so as long as it's, uh, we have a record of it, because what we're looking for uh, on that source of down payment, we're looking for two consecutive months. So when you present, say, okay, I have $50,000. I'm going to ask you for two months bank statements to show that you have that $50,000 somewhere. It can be in a combination of accounts. It can be in one account. It can, but it's just, we're going to be asking for that. Now that's part of the sit down because if you just deposited $15,000 into your bank account because you got some gifts or because you were saving at home or because you didn't want to keep it in the bank, um, then we need to keep that in mind. We need to keep in mind, uh, do we need to allow for those two months to pass? Do we need to, how can we source this? Um, you know, some people even sell their assets if they decide that they want to sell a car, a boat, or, you know, depending on what their goals are, that is also doable. We just have to make sure that we're doing it right, not to cause any glitches in the future, you know, uh, make everything nice and smooth. But there is a, a variety. You can also use stock and bond accounts. Again, we just have to document it. Um, so we want to make sure that whatever you're going to be using, it's just uh, nicely paper trailed because um, I, I can't stress it enough. Every dollar, and I'm sure Sandra and Lori know, I mean, that we all know this. Oh, Every okay. dollar that goes into your purchase, including your deposit, has to be paper trailed. So we want to make sure that that becomes a biggie when we're in the process. Um, we don't want to glitch when it comes to money. <laughs> so that's a big deal. Everybody's money is a big deal. And we want to make sure it's it's done right. Okay. So we keep coming back to this game plan. You, you, you just have to see a lender to figure out what this game plan is. There's so many elements and, you know, just have someone hold your hand through this process is, is so nice. Um, and I, I think that... Um, attendees, you should really look at that as your loan officer as someone who's really guiding you through as your counselor is just kind of really wants to make this happen for you. Uh, remember, they don't get paid unless uh, they figure out a way to make you a loan. So they have an incentive to, you know, work with you and make sure that you have a loan that works for you. Um, and that they, they, uh, there's no charge to meet with this lender ahead of time. So um, this is a good move for you to make. So I really encourage you to do that. Um, Sandra, that brings us to, well, how do you select a lender? How, how do you know who to go to? I mean, I hear so many times people go, well, I'm just going to call around and get someone who has the best rates. And, you know, is that a good way to shop for someone or how do you choose a loan officer? Um, so I don't, I, I don't agree with just shopping around, like how you said, just shopping around, trying to look for the best interest rate. I just feel like you, like as whoever you're going to be going through, when you do shop around, look for all the information that they're providing to you, all the different programs, all the different assistance programs, even closing cost programs. Make sure they have great communication with you. Um, they're following up with you, answering all your questions. 
Um, they have a good rapport out there and they're educated in the products that they're offering to you because there is, you know, there is a lot of products and there's a lot of, there's a lot of programs out there, but if they're not explaining um, certain programs to you and they just say sign here, sign here, you know, you want to be educated on what you're signing. Um, so I would just say that, you know, be thorough on the process of choosing a loan officer or choosing a bank on getting pre-qualified and moving forward with that loan with that. Great. So would you think like recommendations from friends or coworkers or? Um, and that's um, always really good is getting recommendations from, you know, referrals from coworkers, from family members, from friends, because what happens is if they, if you've done a, if that loan officer or that bank did a great job and they followed through and had very good communication with that one person, that person's going to refer all their family, all their friends to that loan officer. And you know that you're going to be in good hands. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, say you meet with someone who you think, oh, well, this is going to be a great loan officer, but you don't really connect and you Kind of don't feel that comfortable with them. Do you have to stay with them or? No, you... you don't have to stay with them. Um, there is no contract. There's no, so you can go with whoever you like, whoever you want. I would say, um, you know, do your research, you know, ask around, look them up, you know, on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, whatever they have, and kind of see what they have to offer. Okay, great. Now, in terms of that shopping by rates, if, if I'm thinking about buying a home, in a year and I pick someone by their rates today, is it possible that their rates may not be the best in a year? Is that one of the reasons yeah. why that doesn't make sense? Or Yeah, because who knows? I mean, I know, you know, we've all been in the mortgage industry for a long time. Um, rates change daily. <laughs> I mean, from yesterday to today. So whatever someone is quoting you, a certain loan officer is quoting you or a certain bank, it could change by five o'clock today or it could change tomorrow. We just don't know. So you just never know if that, you know, going rate driven, that's why I say rate driven, following the rate is not always the best thing to do. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people like to go with uh, like an online um, lender or um, to me, you know, there's, there's kind of some things that are maybe caution about that and, and, I kind of like that thought of being able to go in and see a loan officer, talk to their manager if I have an issue. Um, is that a factor? And is that um, I something? have run into um, we have run into a lot of clients that do like to use people online, just because, like you said, they have like oh they have the best rate or they you know got back to me right away. Well, that's great, but sometimes those online companies you're just like a number. So you don't have um, that communication with them. You don't know who you're calling. You can call one person one day and then get like an automated person another day. So I always like to say, if you're going to shop around and look for a really good loan officer, really good bank, actually go in and meet with them, you know, so that you could build that rapport with them. Okay. And a lot of the work you're going to do, I guess when I say online, I maybe should have been more clear, like, you know, an, an e-lender more than um, because I I I recognize that most of the work that you do is going to be online with a loan officer, but it would be nice to be able to go in and see them and and be able to talk to them if there is some some yeah, kind of or they, you can pick up the phone, call them on their cell, text the mm -hmm. loan officer. When you yeah. deal with you know um, banks and loan officers online, you're not going to get that customer mm -hmm. service. Yeah, so that one-on-one -on -one consistency is so important. Great. Thank you. So helpful. Lori. Yes. So the lending world has changed. <laughs> and um, I'm just, you know, we're, we're seeing that things are shifting, kind of hearing that it's a buyer's market, um, but rates are higher. What kind of things are you seeing that are helping to maybe mitigate this, these higher in interest rates? Um, you know, what, what's your take on where we are the market. in the market today. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of encouraged by the market. Um, it's just been over the past several years, um, we've 
it's just been crazy. Um, a lot of cash buyers have been in the market looking for investments. And um, so right now, just because rates are a little bit higher, we're kind of seeing the market slow down just a bit, which is nice. There's less um, multiple offers on properties. Sellers are beginning to now look at offers that have loans attached where previously they were more likely to take a cash offer. So it's, we're um, kind of in a, in a, in a market where it's getting a little bit more heading a little bit more favorable to a buyer um, where previously it was just a seller's market. We still do not have a lot of inventory. Um, so that is keeping prices stable and high. Um, we're not seeing a lot of price reductions a little bit, but not, not given the supply that we have, we're still seeing the, a, a generally market where, where we are seeing prices remain where they're at. But it is nice in that for buyers, you know, they're not having to compete with so many offers um, right now. So it is, rates are a little bit higher, but it is a good time to buy. And, um, you know, there's strategies to help the buyers kind of deal with rates right now. Um, people are looking maybe more towards an adjustable rate mortgage. And, um, you know, we always say, you kind of, you know, if you love the house, looking, you know, really, it's a, it's about trying to find a way that it can make it affordable for you to get in. Whether it's looking at an adjustable rate rather than a fixed rate, which can save a little bit on the interest rate, or um, maybe the seller wants to assist with a buy down of your interest rate. There are different strategies to make that um, a, you know, to make that entry into the market a, a little bit more. Um, palatable, especially with given that rates are up a bit. Well, actually they're down now, but <laughs> they're up and down. They're crazy right now. <laughs> but um, but it's definitely, we are kind of, especially coming into the holidays, we do see the market slow down a bit naturally um, as pe just people are just not as interested in moving around the holidays. Uh, so it, we are definitely seeing, seeing a bit of a slowdown um, as far as at least the number of offers uh, that sellers are getting on properties, which I think makes it definitely a, a better time for buyers or the best time that I've seen for buyers in a while, in several years. Mm -hmm. So is holidays a good time to buy? I mean, is that kind of, there's less competition? You think, you know? I always feel like holidays are a good time to buy. I always have the end of the year purchases that need to get closed. Um, if a seller has a property listed that they're needing to close by the end of the day or the end of the year, excuse me, then um, it, it you know, they may be a little bit more motivated there to sell it for whatever reason it might be. So I, I always, I don't, I, it's definitely a little bit slower as far as the amount of inventory out there, but it's, it's definitely not, it's definitely a good time to buy. I, holidays to me are, um, I don't know, we work 24 seven, right? Sandra and Gabriella, we, <laughs> it's a, the holidays really don't mean what they used to mean. So at least a loan officers, but. Oh yeah, our phone rings all the time. <laughs> Well, that's great to know you guys are so accessible. That's wonderful. Now, when you're saying the, the buy down um, from the seller, so it, the seller is contributing um, something to... Yeah, the so the seller cost. may be... Con yeah, exactly. So the seller is contributing to closing costs, which they're actually paying kind of the difference in the interest rate or the difference in the interest from, say, a 6% rate to get down to a 5% rate. So for one year, they're subsidizing the interest on the loan to bring your rate down um, by a percent. So there's, um, it's a way, we still qualify though on the on the 6% rate, um, but it is kind of makes it a little bit more, a little more gradual of an increase um, in the rate. At least you kind of get a discount the first year, basically. Yeah, that first makes it a lot years. more palatable. Yeah, that sounds, mm -hmm. that sounds really interesting. And then maybe refinancing down the road if rates do drop, but I mean, yeah. first year you say that they, dipped a bit. So that's they have dipped not a just bit. on an upward trajectory. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. The average loan in California is kept anywhere, you know, four to seven years, depending on, on where rates were once someone bought it. So, you know, you could be living in your house for 30 years and probably have refinanced, refinanced four or five times during, <laughs> during that time. So yeah. good. Okay. Well, that's great to know. And it's great to know that we're, you know, more in a buyer's market that, um, you know, multiple offer situation could have been, you know, that was getting pretty frustrating. So uh, yeah, uh, very frustrating. To have a little bit more relaxed process. So great. Well, it's time for your questions. Yeah. Um, Kim, it looks like there's quite a few uh, in the Q&A. 
Yes. Yes. It's, I love all these questions. Thanks so much for submitting them. And again, feel free to keep submitting them. So we'll kind of just go down the list here. Uh, the first one is how long is the pre-approval good for? Um, Gabriella, I'll let you take that since you were talking about the, the pre-approval. Mm -hmm, sure. So generally, um, our pre-approvals are good for 90 days. However, because the shopping time, you know, it's it can take longer than that, obviously. Um, it, it can be all we need to confirm to make that last a little longer is that you haven't uh, lost your job. <laughs> you haven't made any major changes. Uh, you didn't go buy uh, furniture before you bought the house. You know, things like that, that there's not any major changes that have occurred in your life or if you spent your down payment money. Um then we can ex extend it. We're just trying to make it fresh because that's what they want to see when you're placing an offer. So if you find that property on, you know, month five, and that's the property that you want, we just kind of do a little refresher. It doesn't mean that we have to run rerun credit either. Um, depending on the program that we're using, our credit reports can last longer. So, um, uh, so I, I generally try to uh, keep it as long as possible <laughs> without having to go that route, especially because credit is a, is a big factor, like Lori mentioned. Uh, so, I mean, but but like, let's say you do go with an online lender, they have an expiration date on their, their pre-approvals, just FYI. So you will not go past that date. But that's another that's another reason why to use somebody that you can actually reach out and touch <laughs> uh, because we are a little bit more flexible. Well, it seems with as competitive as rates are now that there's, you know, very little reason to be working with an e-lender and, and, you know, we have um, small kind of tight communities that we work in here locally and um, it's important that loan officers keep a good reputation. So I tend to think that, you know, we really have a, a wonderful opportunity to, to work with someone locally and have that um, really have that hand holding process. I think that's so important. Okay, thank you, Gabriella. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the next one is uh, asked, uh, there's a question, if you could repeat those amounts regarding the first time home buyers assistance program. Okay, uh, Sandra, can you um, so back to your notes for, on that? For Santa Barbara County, it's 198,000. San Luis County is 216,000 and Ventura County is 228,000. So, and then um, there was a there was a follow up. Is that joint income limits or individual? Yes, so that's going to be a joint income limit. So that's going to be everybody in that household or whoever's on the loan. Okay, great, great. And wife. Thanks so much. Um, the next question is: Can you speak to types of homes? Example, like park model versus mobile home. Are loans available for these types of homes? Lori, do you want to? Yeah. Take that? I'll take that one. So there, um, whether or not a property is affixed to the land is kind of how we look at whether um, what type of a loan or what type of a, um, home that you would be able to um, obtain financing for. So a conventional loan, which is um, it only is for loans that are affixed to the land. So it could be a manufactured home as long as it's been affixed to the land. Um, or, but if it's a home that has chassis or a home that is um, in maybe a mobile home park, then that would be a different type of a loan. That would be a mobile home loan. And there are um, some community lenders um, that do lend on mobile homes in parks. Uh, typically the rates are a little bit higher and the terms are a little bit shorter just because the economic life for those types of properties is gonna be probably a little bit less than for a um, a regular a stick built stick built home um, that we refer that we may refer to. So when you're saying a fixed, you're saying it has a foundation. It um, has a foundation, or it, it has a um, yeah. There are there are types of loans where we call kind of a manufactured home on foundation. Um, it's it may not be look like a standard foundation, but it is affixed to the land with some sort of um, foundation type. Okay. You just can't drive it away. You can't drive it away. It doesn't have chassis. You can't load it up and drive it off. Exactly. The chassis have been removed. Correct. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. 
Great. And then there's a, a question on the income limits that were mentioned for SB County and um, North County. Does anyone know the income limits for Ventura County? So it's 228,000. 228,000. Okay, great. 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 Um, if a couple is planning to get married and buy a home together, should they get married first? Are there any pros and cons to that scenario? Gabrielle, do you want to take that one? Okay. Um, I'm sorry that I just made me giggle. So, uh, there's, uh, no difference, honestly, on paper, on paper, you are uh, applying, you're committing, you're committing to a 30 year mortgage. <laughs> sorry. That's just kind of the fact. So, uh, but uh, what does make a difference is how you take title. And that's something that we, you can talk to your loan officer about in California, because it is a community state property. Um, honestly, the loan itself you're applying the same way. You know, we're looking at your credit for each of you. We're looking at your income for each of you, your debt. So that factor isn't uh, really, there's no difference. Um, but the the way you take title in a community state property does make a difference if you're married or not, uh, which that can be explained in the process. And, to, to, and the escrow officer is also involved to help you that with that route. Okay, so it sounds like the lender doesn't discriminate between married or unmarried, but that in terms of how you take title, maybe someone should check in with tax accountant or an attorney on, on that component of it. Yeah, it is considered a legal matter when we, we're talking about title. Um, so not that you have to sit down with an attorney, but you do want to find out the options, which the in the process of buying and, and before we can always get some resources for you uh, that with definitions. So because your loan officer is not, you know, we're, I'm not an, a legal representative, representative, I don't give recommendation on that, but you can get definition of what each option means. And then that way you could see what's the best option for you to take. Okay. So in terms of bottom line, sounds like you should get married when you want to get married. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, the next question is, so will a lender know if we qualify for Cal FHA or uh, or FHA, or do we just apply on our own? Okay, Sandra, that sounds like that's right up your alley there. Yes, yeah, so a lender will know right away if you do qualify for Cal FHA or FHA. So when we take the loan application, we'll know right away if you are actually going to qualify or not just based on your credit score your DTI, your debt to ratio income, and the income limit. And if you, like we said, if you've been on title for the last three years. Um, so on Cal FHA, they do offer the 3% down and on FHA, it's a 3.5% down payment assistance program. So your lender will let you know right away. And if they don't, then you need to go to another lender that's going to educate you on exactly what programs you would be able to qualify for. Like I said, information is key to getting pre-qualified. Great, thank you. And then the next question is, which version of the FICO score is used for mortgages? There are several. Guess we're going to lower them. I can way. take a credit score question. On the credit score, we actually um, look at credit scores from three bureaus. We look um, at a tra uh, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, and then um, we will either use the middle of the three scores or an average of the scores. Um, it just depends on the loan program. Um, this credit scoring, it's interesting. It, there are changes coming for credit scores. Uh, there's a new credit score model coming out that is allowing, um, is including utility payments, um, cell phones. Uh, so just as an encouragement, if you're looking at establishing credit, just be sure that you, um, if you do have utility accounts that they are in your name um, or a cell phone, you know, it might be a good time to get off your parents' cell phone bill um, so that you can establish credit um, on your own with a, with a cell phone. And if anyone wants to talk to my kids about them getting their own <laughs> cell phone accounts, that would be awesome as well, because they're now in their mid-20s. <laughs> <laughs> Those family plans, they're hard to beat, though, right? <laughs> they are, but they're not helping our kids establish credit. <laughs> so now, Lori, does that, 
does that mean that there's a difference between a consumer credit score and a mortgage loan credit score? Yeah, so typically the mortgage credit score might be a FICO too. There's different models that are used, um, but I, the consumer credit score is usually gonna be a little bit higher than what you see on a mortgage credit score. Uh, but again, we are taking, we are looking at three. We are looking at the three bureaus, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. So um, you can go to each of those bureaus individually uh, to obtain your score. Um, but uh, again, it's probably the FICO2 model that might be used for TransUnion. It, you know, again, it's going to, um, they, they, there's, I don't know, I'm losing my words. There's a conglomerate that, that they all, um, kind of come into the repositories that give us the scores. Yeah. Okay. So another good reason to talk to a lender, you're going to get your, find out what your credit score is. And so if two people are buying, um, what do they do about the credit scores? You say they you use the middle score, but what happens if you've got two, two, uh, partners? we'll use the low. Well, again, they're changing a little bit, but generally the lower of the, um, middle credit scores. So, um, for instance, um, if you have, you'll you'd be using the lower of the middle. So say like the lowest um, one borrower has scores of 700, 720 and 750 and the other borrower has 700, 730, 750. Um, we would use the seven, say the 720, the lower of the three middles. Okay, great. Kim, any other questions? Yes, we still have a lot of some questions coming in. Um, what does the market look like during the holidays? I think we answered this that it's still it sounds it's like still going. Middle. Everyone's still it's, working. Yeah. <laughs> still and, and sounds like it might be a good time to 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 buy. Yeah, because less uh, less competition. Right, exactly. And then it says with home costs so high and less than a 20% payment. How can one buy a home that has an affordable monthly payment? Gabriella, would you like yeah, to take that? That is, that is um, in our area, that is kind of the, the double-edged sword. Uh, but that's the point of trying to see where meeting with somebody and really looking into the options. Like I mentioned, you always want to ask questions uh, because the in that conversation with your loan officer, um, generally, you're going to have a question of what do you feel that you can afford? Uh, because you're the one that is making that payment. You're the one that knows your other expenses, like your auto insurance, your utilities, that cell phone for the family plan. <laughs> so you really want to know what you can afford versus what you qualify can be two different things. Um, and when you qualify, you know, when we sit with somebody and they tell me, well, this is the payment I want to stay at. Um, it's a really good idea to see what that means on a purchase price. Because if you tell me I have I want a payment of $3,200, then I'm going to show you what that means on a purchase price. And if you don't feel that that's going to get you the home that you desire, then that's where you start making life decisions. Is it that we need to start budgeting more? Is it that we need to make a little bit um, cuts here and there? Um, or do I have to wait for my raise for next year? You know, things like that. It, it, this is a big decision. So it is something that you want to plan for. So um, I totally, that's probably the biggest factor in, in all counties. I mean, all of California, coastal counties, we're, it's difficult because, um, you know, income hasn't reached the same amount as the prices have been, it, we, we're not in a, in a level field, but um but again, going back to those options, uh, what is it, if this is what you have for a down payment, this is the payment that you want, then what's going to help us get to that, that price that you need. Okay. So it sounds like it's a really a good dialogue to have with the lender in terms of, you know, they may tell you what they think you can afford and you may not be comfortable with that payment. Mm -hmm. So maybe a little pushback on the lender or the other thing is, you know, we pay so much for rent um, in our communities that you know, making that transition over to a uh, house payment is obviously more expensive, but maybe it's not that big of a leap. And there's some generally some tax advantages too. So um, when you factor all those things in, um, it's certainly worth exploring. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And then Corby, we, we talked about this a little bit, but uh, getting a loan for a mobile home, I 
if they email us, I believe we have some specific lenders that work with that or? I know that um, through uh, the Cultural Housing Partnerships um, Network, um, Montecito Bank and Trust and Community West Bank do mobile homes, um, loans. Lori, do you, does your bank do? We do, we are not doing them currently, but I would refer them to Community West or um, Montecito or Murphy's Bank. Or we, do, we do do yeah. mobile homes. Oh, oh or Sandra. Sandra. Okay. Oh, gosh, we need to get that on our list then. Thank you. So PB and Associates does mobile homes as well. So um, those are, sounds like those are the three that Coastal Housing works with that would offer a savings um, for a mobile home. And, and we can definitely send you information. Yeah. Any um, follow-up you know, um, information you would like, you can email um, either me or Kim, and we can send that to you. Okay. Yes. Um, and the just about at time, but we will stay on with a couple more questions. If someone has to take off, um, totally understand. And we um, will, again, we'll send you the recording, but it sounds like we do have a couple more. Or yeah, more questions. Yeah. Um, this is kind of, uh, a personal scenario, but uh, a Washington resident wants to buy in Arizona. Are there benefits of buying a home as a resident? Um, but I don't know if that really. Um, We're not like I'm not licensed in Arizona, so I don't. I can't. Yeah, that. yeah, that's kind of out of our scope right now. So um, the areas that Coastal Housing Partnership serves are um, San Luis Obispo County, Santa Barbara County, and Ventura County. Yeah. Um, do Sandra, Lori, and Gabrielle cover Ventura County area, or should I go through Vent Ventura County Credit Union for a lender? Um, all of our lenders that we work with through Coastal Housing Partnership will serve any of those three counties, Ventura County, Santa Barbara County, or San Luis Obispo County. So it's up to you who you use. Um, if you have access to a credit union, it's usually a good idea to explore to see what options um, they have and um, to see how competitive they are. Um, I always recommend um, checking that out compared to, to another lender. And I did send you a list of our network partners. I typed that out for you. Uh, and then uh, a question is, um, my wife's on an H4 dependent visa, has EAD and self-employed are they able to get a joint loan uh, depending on immigration status? I'm not sure who to throw that one out to. Does anyone want to um, jump in? Yeah, so it's going to, um, we usually have to see specifically her, I, what type of uh, identification she does. If she has the visa with conventional uh, programs and FHA, they both have different guidelines for that. So we would be, we would dive into which ones uh, will accept that. And then that would determine how much like your down payment would be, all that stuff. If either one accepts it, like for example, let's say uh, conventional financing accepts that, that type of uh, visa, then you'll be eligible for first time buyer programs. So you'll be eligible for everything. Um, if for some reason they don't, then it, you would be doing the loan on your own. But um, there, it is a very broad um, eligibility. So I would definitely just be clear. It's very specific when you're talking to the lender. And even if you can send a copy, a, a picture of, of the identification of the visa, that because we could really look it up and make sure that it's good to go. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Corby, there's about 12 more questions. Should oh, we goodness. have um, people email us or? Um, can you take a screenshot of those questions? Um, and mm -hmm. uh, we can get those answered. Are they coming in and honestly, or are they coming in with the? Uh, yeah, it's, it's all over. With an ID. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Should we go five more minutes for panelists? You want to take the, about five more minutes and see what we can get through? Yeah, it's fine. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, let, let's go for it then. At least we'll okay. have this on recording. We can send it out. Yeah. Uh, do you need a down payment of buying a parent's home? Mm -hmm. 
Uh, that's a good question. That's a good question. It depends. <laughs> it depends if your parents are uh, willing to gift you some equity um, as a down payment, if they're willing to take, you know, maybe less than um, you determine a sales price, maybe it's less than market value. Um, it could be considered a gift of equity. Uh, so you could potentially do it that way. Uh, there are some stipulations where it's not considered an arm's length transaction, which could make it a little bit difficult um, for conventional financing. Um, it is something that we see a lot kind of on portfolio financing, which means we keep that um, in-house. Um, we don't try to uh, sell that on the secondary market. Uh, so, um, but if it's, it, it, so that's kind of, you can use a gift of equity as a potential for a down payment. Um, so your parents, so say you were selling your house for, parents were selling it for 500,000 and they were gifting you um, $50,000 in equity. So your loan would then be, um, you know, 90% of that. Um, so that is a possibility uh, so that you don't have to have your own funds for that. So your parents would just be getting less as their proceeds from the sale. I think that's um, that's really helpful, helpful, Lori. I think that you know this is a good idea to just go meet with a lender and see specifically what your situation is, um, and, and and get started on that, so that they can really just run the numbers for you. Uh, next question is: What about personal loans that are not on your credit report? Lori, you are, you're credit. yeah, I, yeah, I know. back to back with credit. So credit loans that aren't reported, we can get an independent history of if we're if possible. Sometimes we can um, try to create a, um, alternate credit sources and use that personal loan to have added to your credit profile, and um, that can be used. So I again, you want to pay all of your loans on time, um, just in case if we do need that extra credit line, we can have that added to your report. Um, but again, it would require um, verification of that loan. So it would require verifying that you have made your payments on time. So whether that would be 12 months of canceled checks, 12 months of bank statements, in addition to statements from the person that you borrowed the money from. Um, and probably want to see some sort of documentation about what that was, whether if it was a loan, do you have an actual note um, or an agreement between the two of you? Okay, great. Uh, next one, do closing costs include a home inspection or would that be something the buyer needs to pay independently? And I know for coastal housing, we do have some discounts on that home inspection, yeah. right? And yes, Sandra, do you want to take that one? Sure. So um, the home inspection is not part of the closing cost. Um, the home inspection is being paid um, independently to the home inspector. Um, you would have to get with your real estate agent and they would get you guys, get you someone to inspect the home. There is a cost for that. A home inspection also, I don't, there's two different homes. There could be an appraisal home appraisal, which is also an inspection and then an actual home inspection. So the appraisal is part of the closing cost, but a home inspection is not. Great. Thanks for distinguishing between those two. I think people, uh, oftentimes people get those confused. So thank yeah, because they're both in inspections, but one's an actual value of the property and the other one's just an actual inspection of the property. Great. Uh, Next question is, do HOA monthly payments include certain insurances like fire, et cetera? I've seen this in one of the townhomes or condos, and I was totally unaware that they covered these amenities. Usually an HOA has a separate insurance policy, right? Yes. They may have a master policy, and that master policy could include um, homeowners insurance. Uh, the lender may or may not require an additional um, HO6 policy that we call it, um, depending on what that master policy covers. If the policy covers what they what we call the inside walls and the walls in, um, then we the lender will not require additional uh, coverage. But if that policy is just to cover the building, then the lender may require a policy called a walls in policy in addition to what the um, HOA is providing. Right. But 
we'll assess that when we look, when we get the master policy from the association. Mm -hmm. uh, next one, rent in Ventura County is rather high, but considering the cost to buy a home for the first time, does anyone recommend renting versus buying? I'll take oh, this one. Okay. That's a loaded question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it, when you're looking at buying a home, um, the simplest thing you can think about is your rent's going to be increasing. I mean, we know that, right? I mean, uh, everybody most likely is going to get a rent increase this January or maybe already received it for January. Mm -hmm. um, now, with the mortgage, with when you're buying a property, that in itself, we, you have that security. Yes, it may be a little higher because of a cost right now but you have the security that your payment will remain the same. That's a huge, huge uh, factor and something that you can count on. I mean, you can create your finances, your job is your, your employment. You know, let's say you want to take another job, you know what your mortgage and your, your housing expense will be in the future versus if your landlord's going to raise the rent, the max 9% or 8% in your county. So that in itself is big. In addition to that, we already know, you know, equity, um, you know, your monthly payments are going towards reducing that balance that you paid for the home. And the more that you pay, the, the lower your balance gets and generally your equity will increase, um, especially in our I mean, all over California and in every, every state, um, real estate is, is one of the biggest, um, assets you can have in your future. And it's always a, something that's secure for your future. So you do want to take advantage of that as something to build, build it is considered building wealth. So I'm going to say I'm, I'm always pro home ownership, um, not because of what I do, but because it does build, help you build for the future. Yeah, are there just a couple more or should we? Yeah, go? yeah, we just have two more. <laughs> okay, um, let's go. <laughs> one is, it seems like a lot of mobile homes are for 55 plus. Are there any hopes of, of finding a mobile home park that is not 55 or above? Sandra, do you want to take that, that one? Yeah. So there is mobile home um, parks that are not 55 and over. You know, you could, you could be younger than that, but you would have to get with a real estate agent to um, guide you into where those parks are at and what the requirements are. Um, we could do the loans for those, but it just depends on trying to find an actual property that fits your needs. Because there, there is a lot of parks out there that a lot of people don't know about, um, but I would get with your real estate agent to guide you in the right place. Great. All right, last question. Last question is the benefits of being a County of Ventura employee. Are there programs directly for those employees? Uh, Gabriella, mm -hmm. um, you're based in Ventura. I don't know if you, I don't mean to put you on the spot. Do you know of any that? Uh, well, I mean, if you're living, wanting to, you work in Ventura and you're wanting to buy in the county, uh, we would look at, at all the programs that are available. Um, there is some, city programs that depending on what city you're wanting to buy, we would actually look at that to see what um, what benefits they can carry and if it's beneficial for you, if you're within the, the guidelines and all that good stuff. Um, so it is one of the things that you, when you're sitting down with your lender, you do want to ex explore to see if, um, if there's something available. There is uh, so like, for example, the program that Sandra was talking about, that's a California program, but there is other programs that are offered by county and city. So we would definitely look in to see what, where you're planning to go to, to determine that. Great. Thank you. Well, thank you, Sandra, Lori, and Gabriella for um, such great information. I appreciate your time today and your preparation for this. And um, I'm sure our attendees feel a lot more prepared to take that um, step toward home ownership. And um, thank you attendees for uh, joining us today. Yeah, thank you so much. Such a great panelist. And a lot of uh, people said were, were um, wanting to send their thanks for all the information today on the chat. So thank you. Oh, great. Thank you well, for having us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. All right. Have a great day. You too.